power on. We are recording. Uh, last week we were blessed to have online live with us from the nation of Dubai, our friend David Carter. And David listens in regularly on the second Sunday in February. David is going to be presenting the word to us from the nation of Dubai. David's going to bring forth the word. We're looking forward to that, David. And uh, we thank God before long we'll be hearing from our friends in Cameroon, our friends in Europe, our friends in, in Africa, as we bring people on from all over the world to present the gospel on the Back to Basics online church. And we haven't forgotten you all. We haven't forgotten our friend Nathan, who's probably working on a new sermon right now. He turns 13 years old this month, and uh, I know he's working on a new sermon. So we want to uh, get you all to uh, share the word that God has given to you, and we give God the praise. Ladies and gentlemen, we just praise God. We thank God uh, for what he is doing. Now, uh, God has put on my heart to take the church back to basics. And this year, this year, uh, this brand new year, we're going to take the church back to basics. In other words, God has put on my heart. He said, he said, son, there are a lot of people in the church who have never been taught the basics of the faith. God said, for that reason, many of them are getting blown away. Many of them are hearing different voices. And many of them are picking up doctrines and teachings that are not of the Lord. And so he says, he wants his people to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And so he said, I want you this year. He said, don't try to be deep. Just take the church back to basics. And so this starting today, starting today, we're going to teach foundational principles. We're going to teach foundational basic stuff from the Bible about what it means to be a Christian. I want to give you this as God gives it to me so that you can be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And so that when the winds and the rains and the storms of life come, you will be able to stand. You'll be able to stand. And so we'll be getting into this in a few moments. I thank God. I thank God for the snow. Because of the snow, we have many more people on live with us today. And uh, uh, we're not glorying in the snow, but I thank God for the snow because it has enabled uh, some of you to come on board and to uh, find out what's going on at the Back to Basics Church and, and pick up all these teachings, and we want to be a blessing to you. And so even if you cannot attend regularly, we're glad you're here now, and we pray that what you get will just give you a little taste, a little glimpse of what we'll be doing this year. And we I believe you to go to, into the archives, to the YouTube channel, and watch these videos. And we try to keep our services uh, about an hour. And sometimes we go a little longer because we want to pray for people. We want to meet, uh, ask God to meet your needs. And so we bless God today. And so uh, uh, we want to, uh, we're going to sing, um, we're going to sing happy birthday to Nathan. Nathan Branham, tomorrow is his birthday. He turns 13. And then after we sing happy birthday to Nathan, then we're going to ask Nathan to come on and lead us in prayer. Praise God. We're going to sing happy birthday to Nathan. I see David Carter's on from Dubai. And all the way from Dubai into Africa, across Europe, and back into the United States, let's sing happy birthday to Nathan. I'll start it off. Happy birthday to you. 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 Happy birthday to Hello. Hello, Nathan. 
thank you for the song. <laughs> uh, dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the food and drinks that you provide us, Lord. Lord, I just want to thank you for this extra year that you gave us, Lord. And I thank you for this church, online church, Lord. Forgive us for our sins, known and unknown, Lord. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This is He's bearing amen. his head blushing. <laughs> Praise God. God bless you, Nathan. God bless you and give you a long life. You're 13 now. We pray that you'll live to be at least 120 should the Lord tarry. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Yeah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. We've got a great lineup for this year in this online church, and, and we're, we're, we're just going to stick with what the Bible says. And God said uh, to me, <clears throat> take the church back to basics. And um, we, we want you to be able to get some of the basics that many of you may have missed. Some of you, you may have already heard these things, but it's good to train and retrain the body of Christ. You see, it's, 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 it's mind-blowing to see the number of people dropping by the wayside. It's mind-boggling to see the number of people who claim to be saved, but when the first trouble comes, they get blown off out of the waters. It's mind-boggling to see some people say, I'm saved, but yet they continue in sin and never get delivered. It's mind-boggling to hear someone say, I'm saved, but then uh, in, in their homes, they're cussing people out and they're doing ungodly things and, uh, and, and living unfaithfully to the Lord, not being faithful to their spouses, not being faithful to their on their jobs. Uh, it's mind-boggling, yet people are saying, I'm saved. I'm born again. Ladies and gentlemen, I think people take this thing called salvation too lightly. God thinks the same thing. That's why he says, let's teach the, the basics. Let's establish a firm foundation for believers. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to spend mm -hmm. time and establish a firm foundation. If you can't come on live with us on Sundays, then we will have these messages archived so that at the end of this year, you will have 51 <laughs> messages based on basic truths, basic truths. And there will be enough in this archives, in the archives, to keep you above board. I'm, it, it, it amazes me to uh, uh, see uh, what's happening in, happening in America where there are so many people who are supposed to be saved, but yet uh, we've got a government shut down. And then our leaders are bickering with one another, and many of them claim to be saved, but they're fighting against one another and fighting against mm -hmm. people. And, 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 and many of them are hating the Mexicans and hating the people from Guatemala and El Salvador and, and, and uh, people south of the border. Ladies and gentlemen, hatred is not of God. And, and even the president uh, should not hate anybody. I mean, when you hear the rhetoric coming out of people's mouths and it's poisonous and venomous, yet at the same time, uh, many of these officials put their hand on the Bible and solemnly swear. Something's wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Something's wrong. This nation is messed up. And somebody's got to stand in the gap and say, well, thus saith the Lord. God asked me to stand in the gap. And I said, yes, Lord, I'll go. People are gonna, some people are not going to like this kind of preaching because this preaching is going to cut to the quick. This preaching is going to expose the enemy. This preaching mm -hmm. is going to pull the covers off people. This, people, this preaching is going to pull the covers off people in the White House and perhaps in your house. And one thing about me, when I preach the gospel, I do not make excuses. I'm not afraid to preach what God says to me. You can hate on me. I just don't care. I'm going to say what thus saith the Lord. But it is, it is a disturbing to see so many people, they're saved one day, and then five days later, they're in the chat room, Please pray for me. I I I I, I broke my, my main fingernail. I mean, you get we're getting some stupid stuff in some of these prayer uh, chat windows. And some, some stupid stuff that people shouldn't even let come out of their mouth or come out of their fingers in their 
and they're texting. And God is looking for people who will stand. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can't deal with losing your fingernails, or you can't deal with uh, losing a tooth, you chipped a tooth, and, 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 you, and you're freaking out because you chipped a tooth, or you uh, chipped a fingernail, what are you going to do when when the storms really blow? And so, yet, we hear people say, I'm saved. Well, you know, it's an embarrassment to God. I believe it's an embarrassment to God for people to say, I'm saved, and yet don't know the basic principles of salvation. And here, God put on my heart this also. He said, many are claiming to be saved, but they are too lazy to read the Bible. And ladies and gentlemen, because many people are too lazy to read the Bible or to engage in a serious Bible study, they don't know the first principles. They don't know what the Bible is all about. And here, these same people, they will listen. They will listen to any voice coming down the pipe, any wind that blows, any voice that whispers in their ears. Christians are listening to these voices and are getting blown away. And, and then God is saying, and a lot of preachers are preaching, but they don't study my word. They're preaching what they feel like preaching. They're not paying attention to me, God says. Many do not even seek my face before preaching. So it's a sin and a shame. It's an embarrassment, ladies and gentlemen, to God. It's an embarrassment to the church. It's an embarrassment to me and to you to see the things that are being done Hear the things that are being said, and some of this stupid stuff coming out of preachers' mouths. Some of this stupid stuff. Some don't know what what rock to stand on, but yet they're preaching, and everybody wants to preach. Ladies and gentlemen, it is disturbing the number of people who want to be prophets. They want to be like Paul Begley, or or, or they want to be like uh, 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 Delford Davis, or they want to be like Elijah, or uh, they want to be like. Uh, Paul and Silas, and, and, and they want to clone. And I see a lot of people in the chat room. I see a lot of people in some of these text messages that I get. A lot of people, we got folks, they love to predict uh, storms and tsunamis and earthquakes, but they don't know diddly squat about the Word of God. And so what we have, we have a nation of preachers, a nation of prophets. They're prophesying and they're preaching, but many are not saying what thus saith the Lord. How can you say what thus saith the Lord when you don't know what God is saying? And how can you know what God is saying when you don't read the Bible? And here's the thing. Here's the thing. And I know this is going to hit some of you right in the, right in the belly today. Right in the belly. Some, some people are in and out. They're in and out Christians. They're Christian today, and they don't know what they are tomorrow. They're Christians next week. They don't know what they are the following week. Uh, they say I'm saved, but then you let uh, a, a, a tax bill come, or, or you let the car break down, or you let somebody get sick in the household, and people freak. They freak. They don't know what to do. And so many are turning back to drugs and alcohol and sex and adultery and witchcraft. I see people entertaining witches even in the chat room. Uh, I see witches coming on even in the chat room trying to steal the thunder of God, trying to steal the word of God. And so, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to survive, and if your household is going to survive, you need to stand on the firm foundation. And you may say, and I, and I know some of you are arguing with me right now. Some of you listening to this, this recording, you're arguing with me now. That's your problem. You're too argumentative. Some of you know so much. You're so smart. You know so much. Nobody can teach you anything. And unless you're preaching it, you really don't want to want to hear what anybody has to say. Some of you came on because it snowed. It snowed up in the in, in the north. It snowed, and you can't get out to church. And you need to go to church because some of you are so uh, uh, caught up, and you've got to be in church on Sunday. And 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 yes, this is true. But a lot of people must be in church in Sunday on Sunday. But a lot of them, their attitudes are not toward God. Their hearts are not open to God. So yes, I tell it like it is, ladies and gentlemen. I pull no punches. I preach the word of God. God is angry. God is upset. God is tired of the okie doke. God is tired of being embarrassed by people who call themselves Christians today and don't know which way to turn tomorrow. And they don't know how to teach their families, 
husbands don't know how to teach their wives, and so many wives, I'm talking, so many wives are rebellious against the husbands. Well, he drinks, or he's got a, 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 a problem with drugs, or, or, or he doesn't have a job. Well, you married, you married him, you married him for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, until death do you part. And when you married him, you came under the subjection of his authority. Well, I disagree with you, Pastor Carter. See, that's the problem. There are too many people who disagree. I preach the word of God. The word of God says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. And if husbands would start loving their wives as Christ loved the church, we'd see whole households coming under the lordship of Jesus Christ. And then the Bible says, uh, wives, be submissive to your own husbands. I see, uh, that's why I don't, I, don't, I don't counsel many women. I do not counsel many women. I ask Sister Jackie to counsel the women. I don't counsel many women because I'm not going to come between a, a woman and her husband. Uh, I've seen a lot of rebellious women. I've seen a lot of slick women. They won't even go to their husbands for counsel. But they'll come to me and try to get a wedge between them and their husband. I don't fall for the okie doke. I used to, but I'm, I'm older now and I'm wiser. And, and I thank God for the Holy Spirit. And so we need to get some things in order in our own household. You may say, well, Pastor Carter, if the rest of the year is going to be like this, it's going to be tight. Yes, it's going to be tight, but it's going to get right. It's going to be tight and it's going to be right. Because many of you do not have to be blown away the way you are. Many of you do not have to be blown off course. Your ship does not have to wreck. Your train does not have to wreck. <clears throat> you can prevent a train wreck. You can prevent a shipwreck. And, uh, and I want to address those of you who are listening, who are listening live, and those who are listening by video or, or the recording. Don't get so proud and so puffed up that nobody can teach you anything. And, 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 and you may say, well, you're not my pastor. I'm just on temporarily. Well, <laughs> praise God. Well, while you're here temporarily, hear what the Lord is saying through this pastor. Stop being so proud. Stop being so arrogant. Stop being so so unteachable. And then there are some of you, 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 you. It's like it's like the smorgasbord, Ryan. It's like uh, uh, Shady Maple up in Lancaster County. Remember, Ryan, we went to Shady Maple and we had our choice of hundreds of, of entrees of food. We could just go and pick and choose. Well, that's the way it is with a lot of, of people uh, who attend church. They attend the church of their choice. They will go here this Sunday. They'll go there next Sunday. Well, they're having free dinners at First Baptist next Sunday, so let's go there. Or they're give away, giving away clothing uh, uh, at, at Second Presbyterian. Presbyterian, let's go there. Or they're giving out free toys for the children on the third Sunday. Let's go there. And so many, many people are church hoppers. They're going to get what they can get, but they're not going with the attitude of seeing Jesus or hearing from Jesus. Then, ladies and gentlemen, as we build this foundation, a strong foundation for the faith, I want to say to you pastors out there, you pastors, I charge you to preach the gospel and stop preaching those uh, uh, fa famous sermons that you've written. Stop preaching those ideas. Stop preaching those ear-tickling messages that you're preaching. Some of you pastors know how to manipulate people. You know how to manipulate people uh, to get their money. You know how to manipulate them to get them to work in the church. But ladies and gentlemen, it is not about manipulation. Many of you pastors are going to have to stand before the Lord and give an account for the things that you preach. You're going to give an account for the things that you supported. You, we all have to give an account for the words that come out of our mouths. We've got to give an account for this ministry. And so, uh, uh, and I know there are some of you listening, you say, I don't like him. He, 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 he's too straight on. I don't, look, ladies and gentlemen, I'd rather be straight on. I would rather offend you now than have you to be embarrassed at the, at the judgment. Because there's going to be great embarrassment at the judgment. There, the scripture says there are going to be people saying, Lord, Lord, 
uh, uh, I preach the gospel, Lord. I fed the hungry. I clothed the naked. I built houses for the poor. I helped the homeless. I gave blankets to the homeless. And Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. So I'd rather save you the embarrassment that to have to go that far. Make these corrections now. Stop being so proud and so puffed up. We're looking at a church. We're, when I say church, I'm looking at the body of Christ puffed up. There are people who can't be taught. You can't teach them anything. I see people, I get witnesses of people getting saved, and they tell me, I'm saved. I'm saved. Well, uh, uh, are you studying the Word of God? No, 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 I'm saved. I'm saved. Ladies and gentlemen, once you're saved, that means that it's time for you to get a foundation. Here's, here's what the Bible says. Here's what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7. I want to read something from Matthew 27, and this may help you uh, to understand what it really means to be saved. Look at Matthew chapter 7. Uh, 26, 20, starting with 24. Therefore, whosoever saith these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Verses 28 and 29 in Matthew 7. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Preachers, preach the word with authority. <clears throat> preach the word with the authority of Jesus Christ, not with the authority of the scribes. Too many preachers are trying to please CNN or Fox News or the deacon board or the trustee board or the steward board. Too many preachers are trying to please the mother of the church or the choir, or, or the pastor's aid. So many preachers manipulate the, the people. They will, they will preach depending on what is popular. Ladies and gentlemen, preach the Word of God. In order to preach the Word of God, you've got to spend some time with God. If you're going to be a successful head of your household, you've got to learn how to come under the authority of Jesus Christ. You may say, but our pastor, I'm saved. Yes, you're saved, but saved from what? You're saved for what? You don't have a leg to stand on. You need to stand on the Word of God. Get the Word of God in you. Get a teachable spirit. Ask God to <coughs> create in you a clean heart. Give you a right spirit. Ask God to place you where you can be taught and be willing to be taught. Seek God. Just don't run out to every preacher out there. Don't get set, sit under every preacher. Make sure that man or woman is anointed by God and called by God. Your life is at stake. Your life is at stake. Satan is deceiving people left and right. The Bible says he will deceive the very elect. And here's something, ladies and gentlemen. If you stay rebellious, if you continue <coughs> to rebel against God and you're not going to change, God will remove his grace from you. Well, prove that to me, Pastor. Yes, I will prove it. Romans chapter 6 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Shall we that are dead to sin continue any longer in it? So uh, uh, many, many people I know, many people, they claim to be born again. They claim to be Christians. But they're still living in sin. The Bible says all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but that is no excuse to continue in sin. The Bible challenges us with the word of God. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. 
No, no, a thousand times no. How shall we continue in sin if we claim to be born again? We, we're making a mockery of God. And, and the sad thing is, our family members, they see us. They see us going through these changes. They see the weather changing. They see you going from joy to sadness to depression. And they know when to talk to you. Some of your family members are scared to talk to you because they don't know what you're going to do. But yet, you claim to be saved. God is looking for consistent, steadfast people. The Bible says, Be ye therefore steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not just preaching to you. I'm preaching to myself. God is looking for steadfast, consistent believers. God, God can't trust some of you with ministry because he can't even trust you to come to church two Sundays out of a month. He can't even trust some of you to come into his presence two weeks in succession. God knows how you are. God knows that many of us run to him. We cry unto him when troubles come. We cry unto him when we have a need. Then after that need is met and, and, and the storm is over, we become proud and self-sufficient again. We don't need God. And that's why a lot of people do not grow. They're not going to grow. That's why a lot of pastors won't grow. And, and pastors, you need to teach the people the word of God. Open your Bible, pastor. Read it. Read it. Study it from Genesis to Revelation. And as you study, ask the Holy Ghost to baptize you with his spirit. Ask God to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Ask God to give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. And I say, Pastor, throw away all those sermons. Throw, throw away that library of sermons that you have written, that you have published. Throw them away. Get some fresh manna. God gave Israel fresh manna every day. Uh, manna fell from heaven. God wants to give you fresh manna. And in order for you, whether you're a pastor, whether you're the head of the household, or whether you're a child like Nathan, if you want to hear, receive fresh manna, fresh bread, like Jesus said, pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread. If you want daily bread from the Lord, you've got to get in the presence of God on a daily basis. Don't just go to God when troubles come. Don't just go to God when you're sick. Don't just go to God uh, when the government cuts off your check. Don't just, just go to God when that money stops coming in. But stay in the presence of God. Learn to live in God's presence. Learn to fellowship with God. Learn to depend on God. Learn to trust in God. Learn to put your hope in Jesus Christ. That's the kind of people God is going to work with. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to dispel this myth, this myth, M-Y-T-H, this myth that once saved, always saved. There are many people that have been improperly taught, and, 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 and pastors teach it the way the Bible says. Uh, if it, uh, we looked at this man who built the house on, on stone, on solid rock. When the winds came, the storms blew, that house stood strong. It stood firm. It not, did not move. It did not shake. But then there was a man who built his house, house on sand. He built his house on sinking ground. He did not have a solid foundation. When the winds came, the winds blew that house away. The rains washed that house away. And so it is with a lot of so-called born-again believers. People say they're born again. They come uh, uh, to the front of the church. They make a confession with their mouth. That Many of them make a head confession, but not a heart confession. Ladies and gentlemen, to be born again, you've got to give your heart to Jesus. You've got to give your life to Jesus. You've got to surrender your life to Jesus. In order to be born again, you've got to die. How can you be born again if you don't die? You've got to die to self. You've got to die to your own ideas. You've got to die to having your own way. You've got to die to selfishness. You've got to die to those lusts. You've got to die to that uh, 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 bottle of, 
uh, uh, Jim Beam. You've got to die to that reefer, that smoke that you smoke. You've got to die to that sex with somebody else's uh, uh, companion. You've got to die to arrogance and pride. You've got to die to religion. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to be born again, you've got to die to religion. Some of you need to stop going back into those dead churches where they're teaching dead sermons, where everybody's having a happy bless me party, but nobody knows a thing about the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, to be born again means you've got to be revolutionized in your very core, in your very being. In other words, in other words, to be born again, God's got to take away that foundation you've been standing on and give you a solid foundation that will keep you. Though the storms of life will blow against you, you have a solid foundation. Uh, uh, you've got to get your house built on a solid rock. Well, what do you mean house? Your house, your very being, your, ver your, your very being, your very soul must be built on a solid foundation. And if that salvation is not Jesus Christ, you're, you'll be wasted. You'll be blown away. That is why the Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped. All Scripture. And so... As, as even as I preach, you've got to check me out. Make sure what I'm preaching is of God. Make sure it's the Word of God. But if you never study the Word of God, you won't know. That is why so many people are being deceived, because they don't know. They don't know whether what they're hearing is of God or not. Uh, they don't know if that preacher is of God or not. Preachers sound good. Preachers sound good. Prophets sound good. People know how to uh, put on their best voice. Some of them know how to even uh, go through their gyrations and those things. And, and so many people in church are caught up on antics and, 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 and uh, 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 antics <coughs> and animation and are deceived by the devil. Ladies and gentlemen, unless you have the word of God deep down inside of you, you will perish. You will perish. No, I'm not putting you in hell. I don't, have a, I don't have a hell to put you in. I don't have a heaven to put you in. I'm a preacher. I preach what thus saith the Lord. God said, take the church back to basics. My subject today is Christians need a strong foundation. Christians need a strong foundation. So this year, let's make sure that our foundation is strong. Let's go and make sure. You may say, well, I don't need this, Pastor Carter. Well, bye. I'll see you, uh, I'll see you when you get in trouble. You'll be back when you get in trouble, when you, when you need prayer. When, you'll be back when people can't stand you. You'll be back when all those so-called friends I'll let you know I can't stand you anymore. I'm tired of you. Uh, you'll be back. But I, I say stay with this and learn. And even if you cannot attend on a regular basis on Sundays, get the recording. And learn, hear what God says. And we're going to be teaching you uh, what the Word of God really is. We're going to teach you what Jesus said about the Word of God. And how to hear from the Father. A lot of people are, are messed up because they're, they're, they're denying preachers. They're denying preachers to preach to them. You, just like in the smorgasbord, Ryan. People go and pick their preachers. They I listen to Pastor So and So. I listen to Prophet So and So. I don't like Pastor So and So. I don't like Sister So and So. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to stop the madness and stop putting people down. The very preacher that you rejected might be the preacher preaching the Word of God. The very one that you choose to hear might be the one that's the phony, that's making up stuff. And if you don't know how to discern the Word of God, you're going to get blown away. Please mute your phones, everybody. Star six. Mute your phones. We're still we're still recording. Mute your phone. Press star six. If you don't know how to hear the word of God and hear his voice, because God can preach to you through the trees. He can preach to you uh, 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 through an animal. Uh, God preached to one man through a jackass. He didn't want to hear what God had to say, and so the jackass started speaking. And, and God spoke to the man through a jackass. And so God has his ways of getting his word to us. But you've got to learn 
how to humble yourself and hear the word of God. Here's what God says about the church. This is about the arrogant church, the church we're dealing with today, the church from coast to coast, all over America, all over Europe, Asia, South America. God is saying, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in, in, uh, in, uh, going past the three-week portion, three weeks of a uh, shutdown in the government. Why? Because politicians can't agree. Uh, and and, and they, they're telling so many lies and, and deceiving so many people, and it's all because they want to have their way. And, 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 and there are people, ladies and gentlemen, there are people, I hate to say this, but I'm going to say it, there are people in this nation, some of you are online listening today. You'll, you'll take everything that comes out of the president's mouth as gospel. And, and our president is a liar. He is a liar, ladies and gentlemen. There are some people who will take anything that comes out of a Republican's mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, Republicans are liars. Great, ladies and gentlemen, Democrats are liars. We've got lying Republicans. We've got lying Democrats. We've got, we have leaders in this nation and in your state and, and even in our households, they are so, so full of lies that they don't study the Bible anymore. They don't want to hear what God has to say. They would rather listen to what uh, 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 so-and-so says on CNN or what so-and-so says on Fox News, and they have made Anderson Cooper their God or they have made uh, uh, so-and-so on the nightly news their God. They would rather listen to Don't you know those people have already spent all day spinning that lie so that they can present to you the time they come on the air? But yet God is begging you, please turn to me. I am the way the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Just look look at the president building a wall. You can't keep people out by building a wall. And why keep the Mexicans out? Why keep the uh, 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 South Americans out, Central Americans out? Ladies and gentlemen, these mass killers, mass killers in America, they are not of Mexican descent. They are not of Central American descent. Uh, these people starting back, going back to Columbine and, and these mass murders and uh, uh, the terror, ladies and gentlemen, these are not Mexicans, so why pick on the Mexicans? Ladies and gentlemen, God's going to deal with racism too. God's going to deal with racism in the church. God's going to deal with racism in your household. He's going to deal with racism in my household. We are to love our neighbor as ourselves, but we've got the church... <coughs> The church, ladies and gentlemen, has become so political. The church, I'm talking about the body of Christ, has become so political. They don't want to hear what God says anymore. Their God is their president. Their God is the, their congressman. Their God is uh, 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 Chuck Schumer. Their God is uh, Nancy Pelosi. Their God is a Democrat. Their God is a Republican. And they will kill you to defend what their God says. And their gods, those leaders, those political leaders, are lying through their teeth. And then they have to tell another lie to uh, uh, explain the previous lie. And now what you're getting, liar, 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 pants on fire. And the church is buying this whole package. The church is buying this whole package. And you have a confused nation. You have a divided nation. And, 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 and how long is God going to put up with this? Especially, especially, here's the thing. How long do you think God is going to put up with this, this confusion, especially when all of these people are saying they are born again? Born again. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a look at this concept called born again. We're going to look at it scripturally. We're going to look at what Jesus said to Nicodemus. And, 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 and then uh, we're going to preach the word as God says, preach it. And if you're truly born again, you will make the adjustments that need to be made. In fact, the first thing I ask you to do is check your foundation. Are you standing on the solid rock of the Word of God? 
Do you have a teachable spirit? Can the Word of God teach you? Can God send someone to teach you? Are you willing to seek God to be trained in the Word of God? And ladies and gentlemen, it just hurts my heart, tears my heart up to know the number of people who refuse to study, won't go to school. And, and, and we've got courses available. Uh, it's, it's so easy uh, to study the Word of God, to be taught and trained. But we have a lazy generation and a proud generation, too proud to be taught, too lazy to be taught, and then people are wondering why there's sickness and death all around us, why there's destruction, why there's confusion, why you can't even trust your own government. Well, you can't even trust your own government because you can't even trust your marital partner. You can't even trust your family members. And some of you can't even trust yourself. Some of you can't even trust yourself to go to church three Sundays out of four Sundays. Some of you can't even trust yourself uh, to, 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 to pray every day. Some of you can't, can't even trust yourself to worship God every day. Well, I'm going to worship God. I'm going to start worshiping God every night between 7 and 8. And every night between 7 and 8, your telephone rings or a new program comes on TV. Well, God, I'll start next week. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to stop playing with God, and we've got to get serious. Build your house on a solid foundation. One man built his house on solid rock. And this is the kind of Christian God wants us to be. Build our house on a solid rock. Ladies and gentlemen, when you get saved, listen to this. When you get saved, that means that the moment you start building your house on a solid rock. Imagine you're 50 years old and you get saved. From the time you're 17 years old until 50, 20, uh, 33 years old, 33 years, you've been drinking alcohol. I mean drinking every day. You've built your house on drinking and alcohol. Let's say you're 50 years old and you get saved. You've been fornicating since you were 14. That means for 36 years, you've been committing fornication. Let's say you're 50 years old and you get saved, and you've been a liar, and you've been listening to liars. You hang out with liars, and uh, uh, you never hang out with people who teach the truth. That means for all those years, you've built your whole house on a foundation of lies. And so all of a sudden, you give your life to Jesus. You confess your life to Jesus Christ. You confess Him as your Savior and Lord. That's the beginning of your new life. Now it's up to you to build a solid foundation. Build your life on a solid foundation. But if you don't go to church, how are you going to hear the word? If you don't listen to the preacher, how are you going to listen to the word? Ladies and gentlemen, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The Bible says how can they hear unless they have a preacher? How can they preach unless they are sent? And so we've got to make some adjustments. And we've got to start teaching people the right way. There have been so many people who have been deceived because now that I've confessed Jesus as my Lord, I can go on and live any way I want to. That's deception. And so we find people, they, they confess, they acknowledge publicly, I'm saved now. Two weeks later, they're back out in the nightclub back out uh, 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 committing fornication, living in adultery, back drinking wine, drink, drinking liquor, back uh, uh, taking opioids and, and taking dope. Ladies and gentlemen, let's buy in that spirit of deception because deception leads to delusion. And God says in Romans chapter 1, I will send them a strong spirit of delusion that they will Enjoy the lie. Ladies and gentlemen, if your life is built on lies and, and you don't take any time to learn about Jesus or nobody can teach you or you don't make the effort to build your new life on Jesus Christ, then, then your foundation is, is, is sand. It's lies. It's deception. And so I want to challenge you. 
beginning today and for the rest of this year. I want to challenge you to build your life on a strong foundation. Be teachable. Ask God to give you a teachable spirit. If I'm not the one to teach you, ask God to give you someone to teach you. Ask God to raise up a prophet, a teacher who will teach you until you're able to teach others. Because the Bible says many of you ought to be teachers, but how can you teach unless you're taught? Everybody wants to preach, but nobody wants to learn. Nobody wants to take the time up to learn what to preach. And so we got people going off in different directions. They're teaching this. They're teaching that. They're promoting this prophet. They're promoting this preacher. And nobody has any solid ground to stand on. That is why the church in America is being blown away. That is why the latest statistics say that 17% of Americans attend church. 83% of Americans don't even attend church. That is why. That is why this online church is so important. We are standing in the gap, ladies and gentlemen. We are standing in the gap. This online church is important. We're standing in the gap so that people not only can be saved, but have something substantial to stand on. Because what good is it going to do to someone to stand before God and say, but God, I got saved. I got saved in 2019. And the Lord says, depart from me. I never knew you. What good, ladies and gentlemen, is it going to do to say God, to, to try to argue with God that you're saved because you joined the church or you got baptized and the Lord will say, depart from me. I never knew you. Once you get saved, then the rest of your life should be getting to know Jesus. Getting to know about Jesus. And how can you know about Jesus without the Word of God? Every Word of God, everything from Genesis to Revelation is the Word of God. Read it. Study it. Believe it. Read it. Study it. Believe it. Read it. Study it. Believe it. But then God wants to talk to you individually. Let him talk to you. Learn how to pray. Learn how to listen. Spend time each day in the presence of God. And then add to this another foundational truth. Learn how to worship God. The Bible says in Psalm 139.14, we are fearfully and wonderfully made that we might worship him. And many of us are not worshipers. Oh, we can sing songs. We can clap our hands, but we don't worship God. You see, I worship God when troubles come. When this flu bug attacked me two weeks ago, I began worshiping God. But see, I didn't wait until I got sick to worship God. I've been worshiping Him all along. Because when I discovered that Psalm 139, 14 says, God made me to worship Him, I began learning how to worship Him. And so through the storm, through the rain, through the snow, through the ice, through the times of being hungry, through the times of being homeless. Yes, I've been kicked out in the street. I've been there. I've learned how to worship God, how to put my trust in him. God is teaching me how to build my house on a firm foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, this year, Back to Basics Online Church. It's going to teach you how to build your house on a strong foundation. And we're coming straight from the Word of God. Not what they say in the White House. Not what they say in, in the Congress. Not what they say on CNN. Not what they say on Fox News. We're going to say what thus saith the Lord. I pray that you'll join with me. I pray that you'll join with me. And, and come with the right attitude. Come with a teachable attitude. Come with a repentant heart. Let the Holy Spirit teach you. Let the Holy Spirit teach you. And let him uh, teach you uh, uh, whomever he chooses to be the teacher. 
We look forward to David Carter coming to teach us on February 10th. We look forward to others coming uh, to teach us. We receive them now in Jesus' name, and we believe God will use them. And in the meantime, study your word. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed. Okay, so your friends don't study the Bible. You study the Bible. Some of you need to shake off some of those friends. So your family, you can't study in your household. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, some of you need to uh, get a new family. Amen. Praise God. I mean, you've got, to, you've got to do something to help yourself so that you can be in a place to hear from God and to grow, that the Holy Spirit can grow Christ in you. Praise God. Father God, we thank you for your word today, for your message. Thank you for the many people who are listening to this message, either live or by recording. We pray that you will revolutionize their lives, that you give them a heart for you, that they'll be teachable, that they will seek your face. We pray that each one will build his or her house on the strong foundation of the word of God. And we thank you, Father, that you have sent the Holy Spirit to help every one of us. We bless you. We praise you. We ask that you meet every need that people have, and we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now, we're going to extend an invitation to anyone who wants to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. <clears throat> Some people say, do you want to be saved? Well, being saved, you must be born again by the Spirit of God. And in order to be born again, you must confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe that God raised him from the dead. And once you make this confession, then it's you have a responsibility. You have the responsibility to find out from God, what's the next step, Lord? What's the next step? Some of you may say, well, that's the last step. No, we've already, we've already presented our presentation today. That, that many people come to, come to God, their lives are so messed up when they come to God, and when they confess Jesus as Lord, that's just the beginning of building a solid foundation. Salvation is a continuous process. It is a process. You go from salvation, some, some, some of you need to go through deliverance. Get delivered from those things, that baggage that you've been carrying for 50 years. Get delivered. Only God can deliver you. And so it begins when you confess Jesus as your Lord and declare that uh, Jesus is your Savior and Lord, and then you open your heart to be taught by God. And that's where the church comes in. God uses us to help teach you. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, we praise you and bless you and honor you. God, if there be anyone who wants to be saved, help them to call on your name and ask for the gift of salvation and eternal life. And then, Lord, direct them to the place where they can study and learn about you. We praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let the church say amen. I'm looking for my remote so I can uh, stop this recording. Okay. All right. Praise God. We're stopping.